you know, networking is one thing, but doing an event and taking advantage of it, and I'll plug you a little bit, you got the opportunity to be able to have somebody be sponsor of your event. Yes. So now they get a little more higher profile rather than just attending the event. And you can leverage that kind of thing. So a lot of what I do and I help people with as far as clients and things is, is teaching them strategies because they don't need to produce their own event. It's a good thing to do, but they could produce maybe a smaller seminar or they could take advantage of an event like you probably did some trade show work and the, the client has a hospitality room. Yeah. So you take advantage of that big conference where all these people are coming, all your ideal clients, then you rent a little teeny room for yourself, a little hospitality suite, and you siphon off that big crowd into your own room. Today's podcast guest has a passion of getting people off the internet and into live events. He's a professional magician and event organizer. Magic Brad is the name. Magic Brad is the brand. We not only talk about magic today, but we talk about business branding. We talk about unconventional ways to look at business. For example, getting a job has risk. Getting a job, you could get laid off. Getting a job, you might get fired. Creating a business can serve you forever. We share a variety of things surrounding corporate events and attraction marketing and how to fill rooms and how to partner and collaborate with other companies that you might have synergy with. It's all about the teamwork. It's all about networking. It's about who you know, not what you know, all the age old tricks. We're gonna discover them today with Magic Brad. My name's Travis Sims, and I am the founder and CEO of AGC Accelerated Global Connections. And this is the AGC Experience. Banner season. It's about mailboxes, not inboxes. Building better relationships has never been easier. Using our platform, you can easily send a card and personalized gift to anyone with a simple tap or click, or fully automated. Stop the digital overload and do something that will mean so much more. Banner season is the easiest way to wow people and the way for you to really get their attention. Develop stronger relationships, increase revenue, and improve your retention. You know you've reached an entirely new level when you inspire customer referrals and you don't have to consistently ask for them. For more information, contact Bo Young at 320-249-1576 or go to betterappreciation.com. All right. Well, today I'm here with Magic Brad. So I have to ask... Uh, why do they call you Magic Brad? I know that's your brand and everyone knows you as Magic Brad. And tell us a little bit about yourself, <laughs> what you do, how Magic Brad came about, and um, you know how you help others. Well, the Magic Brad thing came along um, be when the internet came along. Okay. Um, I've been doing magic since I was a little kid. I got When I was like four or five years old, a guy pulled a quarter out of my ear and got me interested in it. You know the story. And I started doing that through grade school into high school. and But the, the basically the Magic Brad brand is to separate myself from the Brents and the Brandons and the other Brads and the Bryans and all the other confusion on the Internet. Because I'm sure you had a situation where you got confused with a Trent or another Travis or oh, something sure. like that. So I knew that the Internet was going to be that way. So like when, when I have people try and get a hold of me, they, you know, what's your website, what's your email? I just say Google Magic Brad, yeah. and they find me. And oftentimes you can Google the keyword Magic Brad and another word like yoga or magic or events or whatever, and that's how you find me. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Now, that, that brings me to uh, a topic that, so I, for, for those of the audience that may or may not know, I'm, I'm a, what I would call a retired magician, if, that, if that's ever a thing, because I think once you're a magician, you're always a magician. Uh, however, you're not actively gigging. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, currently uh, seeking out opportunities for, for gigs and events and things in the magic world. Uh, but I did that for a long time and absolutely loved it and did it professionally. But there are very few magicians, entertainers in the world that can really do that professionally. 
I mean, because there's a difference between the hobbyist. There's the difference between someone who just knows a few tricks or uh, a few illusions. And then there's people like you that have managed to figure out how to build a business out of magic, out mm -hmm. of a brand like Magic Brad. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, well, you, there's also the magician's magician. A lot of people don't realize it, but there's a lot of magicians around. There's organizations of magicians, mm -hmm. and there's magician magicians that really just do magic for the magicians, and they travel yeah. around lecturing. They create yeah. product, and they sell them and all that. So it's another whole area. Yeah. And I, I have a theory that I think everybody's been a magician. Everybody's always done a little trick. They tried something. Sure. So what, what, to continue my story with the magic element of it and what got me into where I am now is I, I went through high school and graduated barely, 1975, but I did magic all through that time. When I graduated, people said, you should get a job. Yeah. So that's what I did. I followed suit and went and found a job, and I worked for the Anoka County Parks and Recreation Department. Okay. Cutting trees emptying garbage cans, mowing lawns, doing whatever the parks needed. Did that for about three or four years, and then I got the notice that I was getting laid off. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, where's my gold watch? I thought I had a job here. So I realized that, that uh, having a job wasn't a real, uh, um, it wasn't safe. It's a risk. Mm -hmm. And my mind went off in another place. I'm a Gemini, so sometimes my brain starts doing some other stuff somewhere else. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah, no, I get it. I, I got a good friend that um, his wife ended up losing her job after a long period of time. Mm -hmm. She was secure, but then all of a sudden she lost it. Now what do you do? So I learned that early on that that's not secure. So I thought I need to learn a trade or something that people can. Mm -hmm. I can't be just jumping from job to job. So I studied uh, design drafting. And... I was laying out print circuit boards and doing electromechanical drafting on a contract basis, and I was getting laid off and like you know hired and laid off and hired and laid off. I wasn't in control of it. Yeah. I also have a hard time with being someplace from seven in the morning to four in the afternoon, and getting a half hour lunch, all that yeah. rigidity. And I thought, heck with this! I'm just going to be a full time magician. And I knew that I wanted to work corporate events and association conventions as my base because that's where the money was. That's where the people were. You know, you do the corporate events, the holiday mm -hmm. parties, the awards banquets, the retirements, the meetings, banquets, uh, all the corporate stuff, yeah. company picnics and all yeah. that. And then the associations, they do conferences and conventions and membership meetings and all that kind of stuff. And I also knew that I didn't want to hit the phones and call up 3M, who's your event planner? Are you planning any nope. events? I didn't want to do that kind of stuff. And what's known now as attraction marketing, that's basically what I started doing. I, this was uh, jumping forward. I graduated in 75. I did the magic through the 80s. Then into the 90s, I created a trade show for the event industry. So this trade show... Um, a friend of mine, Patty Sachs Meshbesher, she used to plan this event, and I helped her with it. And uh, I liked the idea, and I had this idea of all these event planners coming to this event. That would be a really good lead source for me. So I asked her, could I do this? And she goes, go ahead. You know, I just did it for the PR. So I took it over in the 90s, and I called it the Great Minnesota Event Show. I did it at International Market Square, and the exhibitors at the event are caterers, balloon decorators, staging, lighting, uh, yeah portable bathrooms, face painters. There was one magician there. It was me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the people that came to it were your corporate event planners from Target, Medtronic, you know, Honeywell, Cargill, Best Buy. And they would come and fill out a little form saying, my name's Betty from 3M Corporation, and we got a company picnic in August at Tartan Park. We got a budget of $15,000 for 3,000 people. We want a pig roaster, a bouncy thing for the kids, a tent, and a magician and a face painter. Yeah. And I go, there's a lead. So I would continue now to send postcards until they said, hey, are you available in August? And then I'd send them my little packet and they would book me. Yeah. I never did follow up and stuff like that. I would just wait until they said, send me the contract. <laughs> wow. Because I had an ideal uh, audience. I, yeah. I knew what they wanted and I could fulfill it. So the, the product market fit was tight. Yeah. Know? 
you know, very few, uh, like I said earlier, entertainers really take a business approach because most magicians, most entertainers, at least in my experience, have been chasing that trick, chasing that illusion that's going to make them famous, right? Sure, sure. And, and that that's going to be a the thing. They're going to be discovered, if you will. And I always felt like, for me, that like you, that my destiny was in my own hands. And mm-hmm. no one was just going to hand it over to me. And I, I needed to go out and work for it. And I needed to get connected to the right people. And I remember back in the day as well that you know, you're mailing your things off. Uh, I mean, the world's changed so much. Uh, where you were sending a VHS tape or when right. you are sending a DVD for them to watch. And, Some of them are going, what's a VHS? I know. Now, <laughs> now they just uh, look at your link and, and you're golden. So it's changed a lot. Uh, yes. But um, it's just refreshing to, to meet someone uh, that has excelled in this world and has taken it uh, the direction you have. Because you're not... Uh, although you do, you still book magic events uh, for a lot of things. Once but you... Well. But you also, you scaled that, you've changed that, you promote and you put on events uh, for, for trade shows and things like that. Tell us a, a little bit about that, and I know you've got some things coming up as well. Mm-hmm. Well, going back to like the magician and a lot of artists mm-hmm. um, not being that good at marketing, they're just not. They're artists. Yeah. They're not that good at the marketing element of yes. Again, like I got this Gemini thing. I think part of me is the artist and part of me is the, the marketer kind of person. And... Um, so creating an event like that, I believe that live events, like what you do is live events. And, you know, networking is one thing, but doing an event and taking advantage of it, and I'll plug you a little bit, you got the opportunity to be able to have somebody be a sponsor of your event. Yes. So now they get a little more higher profile rather than just attending the event. Mm-hmm. And you can leverage that kind of thing. So a lot of what I do and I help people with as far as clients and things is is teaching them strategies because they don't need to produce their own event. It's a good thing to do, but they could produce maybe a smaller seminar or they could take advantage of an event like you probably did some trade show work and the, mm-hmm. the client has a hospitality room. Yeah. So you take advantage of that big conference where all these people are coming, all your ideal clients, then you rent a little teeny room for yourself, a little hospitality suite, and you siphon off that big crowd into your own room so you don't have to produce the big event and charge you know rent the convention center for 20 grand you could go there and for 500 bucks get a little conference room then hire a magician to come and do some entertainment provide some food and beverage schmoozy woozy people so the event strategy i think it's my my mission is to get people off the internet and into a live event as soon as possible because like i said earlier you can get confused when you see somebody like there's probably more than one travis sims Sure. On the internet. In fact, there's more than one Magic Bread on the internet. But I got magicbread.com. There you go. So, <laughs> but there's other I have breads. travissims.com. Yeah. <laughs> you got to grab that uh, that internet real estate, you know, and capture that domain, if you will. So a lot of times people think that it's a it's a lot of work to put together an event. And I'll share uh, an, a thing that I did. I used to be part owner of the Funny Bone Comedy Club in uptown Minneapolis. And so on weekdays, we wanted to put butts in seats because... Yeah. You know, you had the ability to have a lot of comps because I was part owner. I could comp people in. Sure. And adjacent to the William, the Funny Bone was Williams Uptown. It's right there on Lake and Hennepin Lake. Yeah. No, something like that. Around that area. <laughs> and Williams had this um, comp and money hors d'oeuvre happy hour thing. So they wanted people to come in and drink. They had free food. Big spread. The guy with the big hat with the roast beef and all that oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. 30-foot table of all this good food. And they just want people to come in, have some food, and drink cocktails. The Funny Bone, just adjacent to it, had this room full of comics. And they want to put people in the seats and, of course, drink more cocktails. So I did a mailing. And I'll, I'll preface it. I did another mailing for the wedding industry. And I got I did 6,000 pieces. And I got, like, one phone call. Oh, wow. I did this mailing. It was 10 pieces to my key people. I wanted Cargill, Medtronic, 3M, General Mills, Honeywell, Pillsbury, all these bright people. I had mailed out 10 letters and invited them, and eight of them showed up. So I got an 80% response off of a letter inviting them to come and have company hors d'oeuvres at Williams, a little cocktail happy hour, and then come over and we'll watch a comedy show. So the Williams loved it because they sold more cocktails. Yeah. The people loved it because they got free food. The Funny Bone loved it because they got butts and seats. The comics liked it. They had someone to laugh. The 
club liked it. They sold more cocktails. The people liked it. They had free entertainment. And I liked it because I got all the glory. Right. For inviting all these people and schmoozy who's in them. And I didn't have to do anything. Funny Bone produced the show. They yeah. just had to sit in a chair. Williams did all of cooking. All I had to do was sit up at a bar stool. Yeah. So it's a way of doing things. You don't always have to do the big deal. You didn't have to rent a space at Williams sure. and then buy a bunch of comp ter- uh, group sales tickets at the Funny Bone. There's yeah. ways of making things work. You know? So your approach is more about partnering with people or collaborating with others than trying to do everything yourself. Hence the word synergy. I love the word yeah. synergy. Oh, a lot of my stuff down. is... I've got uh, the Synergy Collaborative. I got Synergy oh, yeah. First Thursdays. I got Synergy Socials. I got Synergy Showcase. The yeah. company I just started is called Synergy Event Marketing. I like Synergy because it means synchronized energy. Okay. Or one plus one equals eleven. I wasn't very good at math, <laughs> but it, if you you leverage it, like like this big long conference table. Yeah. You could probably you probably couldn't move it by yourself. Mm-mm. It's kind of long and clunky. Yeah. But if I grabbed an end and you grabbed an end, we could pick it up and move it. Yeah. Because we're working together. Sure. Collaboration. I like just it. Makes more sense. You, you're big about that. I mean, you, you, that's not just a statement for you. I, I've noticed uh, that you promote and help a lot of different events and organizations around the Twin Cities that I'll see you plugging someone else's event. And it might not be an Nobody. event that you, you produced or that you put on or anything. You just want, really want to help people. I do, and there's a strategy and an ulterior motive to it, you know, a long, long-term game. Back to the booking magic, what I yeah. used to do is I, I had all these leads. So I would, if I, there was something I didn't want, I would send it to my competitors. Yeah. And my thinking was there's 365 days in a year. If I can keep my competitor busy 365 days a year, I can book everything else. Oh, sure. And when they're overbooked... And they got a double book and they got to refer something. Who are they going to refer it to? Probably the guy that's been treating them right. Yeah. So I give until it's blocked out, their yeah. calendar's full, and then stuff comes to me. It's a, <laughs> it's a big way of thinking, though. I mean, uh, very few people think that way. And so it's, it's fun to uncover that as we go through this interview uh, because people automatically think, well, I'm not going to help my competitor. Or I'm not going to send them any business. And like... For me, it's always been about uh, helping the customer. And if I wasn't able to help them, then I wanted to get someone else who could. Yeah. And and they the customer will remember you and even come back to you because you thought enough of them to send them somewhere else when you wasn't able to help them. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll still come back to you. I always have this image of the, the, the big top dog from Coca-Cola and the guy from Pepsi mm-hmm. sitting in a little fishing boat going, you want to be first this month or should I? Yeah. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah. It's a it's an abundance type of mindset to, to understand that there is enough business for everyone. That there, uh, that there is enough. I mean, think about like um, across from every CVS is a Walgreens. Right. Across from every McDonald's is a Burger King and right. so on. It's like, you know what? There are a lot of places you can get a hamburger because... There are a lot of people eating hamburgers. And the other side of it, too, is what if you like the McDonald's French fries, but you like the burgers at Burger King? Yeah. You can both work together. For sure. So when you do that together and you collaborate, it's possible that they're not competitive and they're going to, like, if someone sold copiers and someone else sold paper, it's a good partnership. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. They're not competing, you know, even though you probably sell copiers and paper. And there's another thing I did once. um, It was for a uh, company that sold the trade show displays and banner stands and stuff like this, the big stuff. He had uh, a backlit graphic that they wanted to promote. So what we did, I helped them with their open house. And what we did was we brought on a photographer that took a picture of a um, edible floral display by a caterer. And then we took that picture and we made a postcard imitation for it. And we did a big, large format graphic and we did the backlit graphic. So we had all these other people that were all involved. And then we had some ad specialty people that printed it on coffee cups and all that kind of stuff. And then we had my friend Ron Eccles that did trade show sales training. So all of these people worked together. We had a printer. We had a florist. Mm -hmm. We had a robotic mannequin. We had me as a magician. We had uh, the the caterer, um, the printer, and... 
the trade show display company, they all didn't compete. They actually yeah. worked with because the reality is one exhibitor could possibly use all of those services. Yeah. So we all worked together in That's a collaborative good. to get a bunch of those people in one spot on a one date and showcase this trade show display company, listen to Ron talk about effective trade show marketing, mm -hmm. watch some magic, watch a robot, do all this stuff. Yeah. And it worked really good because everybody working together. Yeah. No, I love it. Uh, I, I think it's so smart. Uh, this was way back in the day whenever uh, I, I was, I used, I think as you, uh, may, maybe not all magicians start out this way, but you start out doing, you know, either restaurant magic or you start out doing uh, birthday party magic or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was just starting out, and I was doing a lot of the birthday party magic, and, and uh, I partnered with a bounce house company sure. because I didn't want to heave those things in and out of the truck. Those are heavy. <laughs> you have to go set them up and store them and all that stuff. I didn't want to have to do any of that. Uh, but whenever someone would call in and they would ask, or, or they would book a magic show, I'd immediately say, you know, have you, are you planning to have an inflatable? Are you planning to have a bounce house at your, at your party? And they'd say, yes. Well, have you, have you picked anyone yet? Are you, have you scheduled that yet? No. Well, let me help you. And, and I would send it to a company that I partnered with. Right. And then the same thing, whenever they finished their piece of business, when they booked their inflatable, they said, have you thought about a magician at your party? Mm -hmm. And so that, that idea of teamwork and, and helping one another is just tremendous when you recognize the value in doing so, you know, that. Some people, their, their mind is thinking, I could do the magic and yeah. I could do inflatables. Yeah. Now they got to get a warehouse and they got to get a truck and they got to get a trailer and they got to maintenance and they got to buy a bunch of kids to set this stuff up. Yeah. It's much better to just work with someone else. And another thing, um, some people think I'll work as like an agency and I'll send referrals and get commissions. Oh, sure. That's too much work. Yeah. You get that little teeny tiny commission and you lose it all with taxes and administrative costs of trying to track it all and all that. Yeah. Just keep trading. And eventually, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats kind of thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I want to go back to, uh, there was um, something you said earlier, and it was you have a passion around getting people off the internet and into live events. What What is it that drives you to do that? What What is the thing? Because there, when there's somebody, that, when there's usually when somebody has a passion, there's some why behind that. So what what is it for you? Why, why get them off the internet? Well, deeper thinking, I want to meet people. Okay. You hear that, my voice? Yeah. It's a deep personal thing, probably a yeah. childhood kind of thing. Now, mm -hmm. we're going to edit this out maybe. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. But good. there's probably some of that stuff in there. That I want to connect with people. Okay. And the thing with the internet, I think it's fascinating that it's globally connected to mm -hmm. everybody has internet access. Not everybody, but the mass majority of people have internet access. And you can communicate in real time with someone on the other side of the planet yeah. for free. That's bizarre. Yeah. I have access to everybody. So the, but but the, the thing on the internet is it's very surfacy and people can mm -hmm. call names and all that kind of stuff and they can hide behind their keyboard. Yeah. Or they can just, uh, they, they're hesitant of putting their real picture on there because of like uh, spying or someone's you know hijacking your sure. identity or something like that. So trying to create a real relationship on the internet, it's hard. It's like, did you email me or was it on Facebook or did you send me a message on LinkedIn or was it, maybe I saw you on Pinterest? I don't know. I mean, it could have been Periscope. I don't know. Was it? Yeah. I don't know how we connected. Whereas if you go to a live event, I know when I met you, I met you at the uh, the study in Uptown. Yes, I remember. Yeah. But do you remember when we got connected on the internet? I have no idea where it was. Right, yeah, sometime after that, but but yeah. So taking advantage of the vastness of the internet, the real time of it, and the affordability of being able to connect with people and then getting them off the internet into the real life. So using all those tools like the Facebook ads and all that kind of stuff, you can narrow down and find people that are interested in sure. magic that live in a 10-mile radius of Minneapolis that have a birthday in March. You can target yeah. those people yeah. really easily. Now just get them off there and get them to a birthday party over at the, at the March right. AGC event. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so use the internet to connect or to uh, attract them to an event where you can actually build a relationship. It's where you're the top meet of the, the person. Funnel. Yeah. It's okay. The top of the funnel. Some people are trying to build relationships online. Yeah. And that's really hard. The best way to do it is like this with a video. Yeah. You know, you can hear the cadence in someone's voice. You can see their eyes. You know what they're really about. But some of this stuff, like just tweeting stuff or sending email messages and links yeah. and all that and short links that yeah <laughs> well you're, you're speaking my my language when we're talking about relationships and whenever i started agc and started putting together all these events that's exactly what it is for me it's about creating an environment where people can start and continue to nurture a, a relationship mm -hmm. so um what is it for you, because you're relatively new to AGC, mm -hmm. you you just became a member over the holidays, I think. and I took advantage of the special. You did? Because I've been watching you for a while. Oh. I took advantage of the special because I'm cheap. Oh, no, that's good. I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's what it was there for, so I'm glad you did. Um, but now I'm seeing you pretty regularly at, at AGC events. Like you're you're invested and you're you're out meeting people. And, and so what, what have you discovered that you like about AGC so far? I like the, that you have a lot of events. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the main thing because people are looking for things to do and you could do uh, you know, this meetup or that event and you're not hitting the same people. But you have a lot of events and if they're an AGC member, it's possible they're in Woodbury, it's possible they're in Minnetonka, it's yeah. possible they're downtown. And then you got your website and stuff so you can kind of connect with those people. And then you're good at uh, getting stuff out there and you do the selfie shots and you can see people like I saw that picture of you and... Uh, and Dan Vargas. Oh, yeah. And uh, yep. I said, oh, I know that guy. Yeah. There's a relationship there. Sure. And you can start making those connections with stuff, and you know that, oh, they're going to be at probably the, 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 next one. the yeah. anniversary one you got coming oh, up yeah. or something. Yeah. And then what I'm doing at that is back to the magic thing. Yes, I'm please taking, share. I'm taking advantage of the ability to be in this room and get higher profile. Because yeah. I don't really like networking, to tell you the truth. Going to a, a room and you've got – 50 or 100 people in there mm -hmm. and they're all trying to be seen too so we're on yep. the same level and who was that person you get all mixed up yeah. but I'm going to be doing magic in February at your February anniversary event wearing a red jacket and people are going to see me yes. and you're going to make announcements letting people know I've got this higher profile all of a sudden just from yeah. that so that's what I'm saying is people can sponsor things and get higher profile sure. and, uh, and it separates them from I mean, all the people there, it's great to have all those people there, but you can be one lap on up and just have a little more notice, a yeah. little more exposure. You have that unique ability uh, through the skill set that you've learned over time with, with being a magician. That's fantastic. And, I, you know, you keyed in on something that I, I think uh, we, should, we should explore a little bit, and that is that the difference between extroverts introverts and where you might fall in that and it's interesting for you to say you know i i, I might uh, not enjoy being lumped in with a hundred people when you're an entertainer so would you <laughs> identify yourself as an introvert as an extrovert and uh how, how do you feel about that what do you um again going back to my gemini self mm -hmm. i think i'm an introvert and an extrovert I'm an introvert. I prefer to do one-on-one -on -one conversations like this. Yeah. If we're having a conversation, if these other four chairs were filled, I might just listen. Listen okay. to everybody else talk. I'll be more of the fly on the wall kind of person. So I like the one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. And um, I lost my train of thought. So the, the uh, extrovert part is I'm capable of getting on the stage and being in front of a thousand people. Yeah. I do my 20 minutes or 40 minutes and I get off and get my check and go home mm -hmm. by myself. Yep. Or with another person, just the one-on-ones. -on and I think it's because we can have one-on-one -on -one conversation, maybe one-on-two conversation. But when you get too many people in there, it gets noisy. Yeah. And then when it gets too noisy, then I kind of just sit back. I'm not shy, but like surfacey stuff. It's hard for me to have a conversation like going to a networking event. Hey, how's it going? What are you thinking of Vikings? Yeah. I don't care about the Vikings. 
What do you think of the weather? <laughs> Happens every year. It's kind of cold out. Yeah. Oh, that's great. It's surfacey kind of stuff. But if you want yeah. to get into these strategies and and have more of a conversation about what are we gonna, I'm big on results. Yeah. Um, like uh, what came into my head is I've got ten thousand Twitter followers. So what? Now what? Yeah. What are you gonna use <laughs> them for? What's gonna right. happen there? Yeah. And if they're from Singapore and Sri Lanka and Acapulco. Yeah. Maybe nothing, unless you're doing internet marketing kind of stuff. But your events, you got them all over the city, so a person can drive way across, like I did today from Minnetonka to Cottage Grove. Or I've got the Minnetonka event, or you've got things over at the Park Place, and you've got yep. things that are a little closer to home. Mm -hmm. And there's them circles that kind of overlap and stuff, and sure. there's a high possibility if I go to the Bald Man Brewing one, I'm going to probably run into Mike O'Neill because he lives down this side. Yes. And Janet. Right. But if I go to Woodbury, that ain't going to happen. Probably not. I'm not going to meet Maybe Mike. You know, Mike I'm like, Mike's getting around Mike a little is, bit, he, too. He's, he's... He rent a Learjet or something. Come yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's down at Prior Lake, right? Uh, somewhere over in that direction. Yeah, it, you know, and we had him earlier in earlier today on the oh, podcast. Really? Yeah, so it was a good conversation. But, yeah, I can identify a little bit with what you're saying because uh, I'm also, I would describe myself as an introvert, and that would probably surprise a lot of people because uh, I run a networking organization because I was uh, previously an entertainer as a magician and uh, d do a ton of motivational speaking and mic time I'm fine with a microphone no problem because I'm in control of it you put me in a room with a hundred people and I have to navigate them and introduce myself makes me completely nervous right. and uh, so it's interesting to find that there are other people like me uh, I also really took that into um, my thought process when I was creating AGC and the format for AGC being having that mingle in the front but with some type of uh, activity so a lot of the a lot of the uh, events you'll notice have an activity a, a uh, conversation starter something that gets people uh, talking which is why I love that you're saying hey I'm gonna do uh, some magic at the one-year anniversary and I'm so glad that you're gonna do that is because again that starts conversation and it, mm -hmm. it creates a focal point for people to to engage into and it's all about that engagement and and, and it's not forced um, engagement yeah like I hate those little things where they give you a, like here's a deck of cards, got to go find your person. Oh sure, yeah. And if if they if they try and come on, you got to do it. You got to go find your connection. Yeah. Then it's like I really don't want to. Don't want to. But yeah. if you just do it subtly, like what you got going on, you play it if you want. If you don't, you don't have to. Yeah. yeah. And I think it, I think that's another thing I like about AGC is your format. It's not your typical speed networking or whatever oh, sure. format. It's got a, don't you say it's like a mix between networking and TED Talk. Yeah, kind of thing. yeah. Because you got educational, informational information right. that's happening. So you can go there, you can do a little schmoozy networking, read some name badges and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Then sit down and the speaker's talking and they might call out somebody and ask some questions and you get to know them. And then after that, you get to go network again. Yeah. So you can go, hey, Tammy over there, she was up talking with the speaker. She's a, a flight attendant. I'm mm -hmm. looking to do something with uh, flight attendants, attendants in Costa Rica. Yeah. You can make that connection. Yeah. So you got a lot of stuff that you can get. A person like myself can think of a strategy instead okay. of going around and handing out cards and talking to everybody and then yeah. you get home with a bunch of cards and go, yeah, now what am I going to do? <laughs> well, and that that's an interesting point. And, and, and that is you said this earlier and it's another point that I, I want to um, explore is that going to networking events and just exchanging cards or uh, talking about the weather or sports is it going to further your business? It, it's it's about being unique with how you approach something and learning a little bit more about who they are and what their why is and what they're passionate about and what makes them the expert and you know really just cultivating that conversation to lead to a more relationship style because mm -hmm. people want to do business with people they know I like, can trust exactly and. Uh there's uh, Melissa Giovagnoli. She wrote this book called Networlding. This was way oh. back. Okay. And the premise of it was you don't want to go and network with a person that is a cell phone, you know, sells cell phones, mm -hmm. or a guy that's a car dealer. Yeah. Because what if all of a sudden he goes, I'm done with cars. 
I want to go work at Midwest Mountaineering. Now you don't have a relationship anymore when all yeah. you talked about is cars. Oh, but if true. that same person had a wife that was a yoga instructor and they had two kids that were in gymnastics and you got the same vibe, when that person moves to Midwest Mountaineering or opens a restaurant, that person's still the same. Yeah. As opposed to stuff that changes. So I'm, I'm big on constants and variables. There's constants that you can rely on and the variables you can kind of move with. Yeah. So at Constance, there's 365 days in a year. There's 12 months in a year, and you have a birthday on one of those months. It's one out of 12. I could probably guess it. Um, June. Close. July. The other way. May. The other way. I can't figure that out. May. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But I got close. See? You did. You got it within a month. Yeah. Cold reading, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> so that's something you can rely on, and you could, like, once a month have a party, like you could do that as you see, have a special, you know, you can come if your birthday's in March. Oh, sure. And even if they're not a member, you can get it free because it's your birthday present. I like that. For yeah. anybody that's March. Because then you can target all those people 50 miles away. That's a great idea, actually. Happens. Yeah. I won't charge you. Yeah, that was super smart. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of, you know, if someone's listening or they're watching today's podcast and they're going, oh my gosh, we need a magician for something, or... I see some opportunity to to do some synergy work together. Like I need someone helping produce this event or I need someone helping uh, market this event or that needs someone with your background in the event industry. How, how do they get in touch with you? I make that really easy. I just, I've captured the word Magic Brad. So they just type in Magic Brad and whatever their favorite keyword is and there's probably a connection. Magic Brad Golf, Magic Brad Yoga, Magic Brad Costa Rica, Magic Brad Travel, Magic Brad Real Estate, Magic Brad Magic. Sure. And you'll find something on me because I've been putting stuff all over the place. Awesome. I'm not it, very focused. <laughs> and and for local AGC members that are in and around the Twin Cities, what is the AGC event that they're most likely to bump into you at? West Side, um, Minnetonka, anything okay. on the west side towards like St. Louis Park. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for, for being on the podcast thank you. today. I'm it's super excited. Uh, if you're listening or watching at home, thank you so much for uh, uh, subscribing, sharing the AGC Experience podcast, and be sure to connect with Magic Brad. Search for him. Uh, if you have an event that is looking for some unique style or you have an event where you're really wanting to grow it and, and uh, collaborate with someone who's been in the business a long time and does some amazing things, uh, check out Magic Brad. So thank you. Appreciate you. And see you soon. This podcast was produced by Elation Studios. Go to www.elationstudios.co to learn more. Elation Studios. Discover your voice. Clarify your vision. Build your life.